the Airbus A340 was supposed to be Europe's answer to Boeing's dominance, promising range, comfort, and quiet, and therefore engine reliability. But just a few decades later, it's nearly vanished from the skies. So how did the A340 go from the flagship to failure? And what happened to all its versions? Let's find out. In the 1980s, flying long distances over oceans with only two engines wasn't allowed under strict ETOPS rules. At that time, most long-haul flights used either four-engine planes like the Boeing 747 or three-engine trijets such as the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed L-1011 TriStar. Trijets were a compromise, offering more range over twins, but fewer engines than a jumbo jet. And because twin engine planes were limited in how far they could fly from diversion airports, airlines relied heavily on quads and trijets for intercontinental routes. Airbus designed the A340 to join this group, a four engine plane that could fly ultra long distances without ETOPS restrictions, aiming to beat the 747 on range and comfort. At the same time, Boeing saw the regulation in rising fuel prices as a warning fuel efficiency would soon matter more than engine count. So while Airbus developed the four-engine A340, Boeing quietly started working on the twin-engine 777, betting on efficiency and the future of ETOPS. Before we get any deeper, let's first talk about the A340's family, which included its four main variants. First, the A340-200, which is the shortest model seating around 260 passengers, with a long range ideal for ultra long flights. The A340 300 followed as the most popular version, balancing capacity and range by carrying about 275 to 300 passengers over roughly 7,200 nautical miles. For even longer distances, the A340 500 offered an impressive range of up to 9,000 nautical miles, making it perfect for some of the world's longest nonstop routes. Finally, the A340-600 is the largest and longest model, able to seat up to 370 passengers, designed to rival the Boeing 747 with its stretched fuselage and higher capacity, while still offering solid long-range performance. When Airbus began developing the A340, they planned to equip it with a new high-powered engine called the Superfan, designed by International Aero Engines, or the IAE. This engine promised enough thrust to match the Boeing 747 speed while cutting fuel consumption to just 80% of what was typical at the time. However, the Superfan's advanced technology proved far more challenging than expected. Its development would take decades, not just a few years. As a result, IAE cancelled the project at a critical moment for Airbus. By the time the A340 was well into development, Airbus couldn't just start over and design a new engine. So they chose the CFM56, the best available option, but really not ideal for a large four-engine jet. It's like building a sleek, powerful sports car, but fitting it with an engine meant for a compact sedan. The CFM56 was great for smaller planes like the Airbus A320 family, but struggled to deliver enough thrust and efficiency for a bigger craft like the A340-200 and 300. This mismatch meant the engines couldn't match the speed or fuel economy of competitors like the Boeing 747, making the A340 less competitive on many long-haul routes and making it much less profitable. In practice, flights on the A340-200 and 300s sometimes took up to an hour longer than comparable 747 flights, leading passengers to choose faster alternatives. Airlines did save some fuel by flying slower, but the trade-off hurt the plane's appeal. Nearly a decade after the A340 entered service, the Rolls-Royce Trent 500 was introduced specifically for the later generations of A340, finally giving it power and efficiency comparable to the 747. Unfortunately, by then, the A340 had earned a reputation for being slow and costly, and the industry was already shifting away from four-engine designs. While the A340 struggled, the airline industry itself was changing fast. Deregulation made air travel cheaper and more accessible, 
and passengers began demanding more direct flights with fewer stopovers. Instead of flying from one hub to another before reaching their destination, travelers preferred routes with just one connection, even if that meant paying a bit more. This shift favored smaller, more flexible twin-engine aircraft that could profitably serve many direct routes. Quajets like the A340 needed close to full cabins to break even, limiting their profitability on many routes. Although the A340 could operate profitably on high-demand routes like New York to London, the number of such routes wasn't enough to keep a large fleet busy. Meanwhile, Boeing's 777 and later the 787 captured airlines' attention with better fuel efficiency, lower operating cost, and versatility, making them the preferred choice for a long-haul travel. Today, most A340s are retired, sitting in desert boneyards or scrapped for parts. A few continue flying as government transports, private jets, or occasional cargo aircrafts. As of 2025, only 49 A340s remain in scheduled passenger service across seven airlines. The era of four-engine commercial jet is almost over. Airlines now favor newer, twin-engine planes that are cheaper to operate, leaving the A340 as a reminder of a design that was soon outpaced by evolving technology and market demands. The Airbus A340, of course, wasn't a bad plane. It was simply built for a world before ETOPS expansion and when rising fuel costs changed everything. Its story shows how aviation technology and economics must align. Bigger and more engines doesn't always mean better. Fuel efficient twins like the 777 and the 787 and Airbus's own A350 became the future of long haul travel. So in the end, the A340 serves as a lesson that timing and innovation are everything in aviation. That's the rise and fall of the Airbus A340. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching, and as always, See you in the skies.